Hello everybody and welcome. I hope that you're well and you've had a great week. Um, today we are going to be creating something called an Impressionist Grain Collage inspired by the work of an artist called Vincent Van Gogh. I think most of you probably would have looked at his work at school. So here's, um, here's one that I made earlier. Um, and this is inspired by one of his artworks called Starry Night. Um, and what you're going to need for this artwork is a sheet of paper or card, preferably this is a thin card I've got. So if you've got some thick paper or cardboard or it, it could be anything like an old cereal box cut up, just because we've put quite a lot of paint on and we're going to be sticking um, dry food on there so it needs to be yeah, uh, sturdy enough to take that. So um, a piece of thick paper or cardboard, um, a sharp pencil please. Um, you um, should have some in your art pack, some, some acrylic paints, um, if you can wear some old clothes or an apron because acrylic paints are a bit of a pain to get out of clothes if you, if you spill them. Um, I'm going to need some water in an old container, um, if you, I'm going to need some brushes if you've got some of different thicknesses and sizes that would be amazing and we're going to need some glue if you've got some PVA glue that's amazing if not you can make your own glue by making by mixing equal quantities of flour and water and this is called flour gruel um, and this 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 works for sticking down for collage it's a good cheap alternative for glue um, if you've got both of them if you've got flour and PVA I advise PVA for this because I I used this for mine yesterday um, and one of the pros of it are that it you can paint over it and I found it leaves quite a nice mark which 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 um, quite a nice texture quite a nice mark that 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 works quite nicely with the the art movement that we're looking at um, one of the cons though is it doesn't stick as well as PVA glue so it's whatever you've got either a mixture of equal quantities of flour and water only use a little bit like that or uh, PVA glue would be amazing and some dry food so if you're using PVA glue this dry spaghetti is fantastic if you've got any of that at home um, like I say I use some of this with my flour gruel and the bits fall off quite easily so I advise that only if you've got it at home and you've got PVA glue that's a good one to use um, if you've got any dry rice that's fantastic uh, this is this is barley barley works really well or lentils green or red lentils um what else corn flakes will work nicely something like string we can stick some string down that would work really well corn flakes would be amazing i know we're all going to have different things in the house so just speak to one of the adults in the house and especially we obviously we don't want to waste food so anything that's close to the, the use by date would be really good to use but yeah generally dry foods are good like I say if you've got PVA glue it tends to um, stick things down quite nicely um, and they tend to stay for longer um, if you don't have that flour and water gruel will work really well too um, just bear in mind for things like pasta they do fall off a bit more quickly but the, it, it, it doesn't matter if they do because like I say I had some rice there that that, that fell off after it had been glued. It's had quite a nice texture, um, like I say, which works well with the dreamlike quality of the work we're going to be creating today. So if you have a look um, before you start following my steps on the Rosetta website, there's a step-by-step -step instruction sheet and it shows an artwork a painting by Vincent van Gogh called the um, starry night like this it's a very moody piece um, it looks almost like there's a storm happening you can really see the clouds moving about it's yeah like I said, it's quite moving quite um, quite evocative quite a lot happening in there and Vincent van Gogh was an impressionist painter and lots of the impressionists their artwork it's not supposed to look like a photo real um, replica of a place or a person it's their impression of it it's quite dreamlike so we've got lots of patterns and brush strokes and like I say a lot of movement in this piece so you're going to follow me step by step to draw this one today 
um, and like I say there's a worksheet up on the website I won't draw and paint the whole thing because it takes a few hours to do so I'll just go over the basics now and what you need to do and then you can carry on with it at home so to start with your cardboard or paper we are going to work a landscape way up which is this way remember this is portrait this is landscape put your paper flat through the drawing instructions so first off I'm going to start on the right hand side we've got like this thing with black mountain so I'm going to start at the bottom of my page perhaps I'm going to try holding my paper like this so it's easier for you to see um, remember to use don't apply too much pressure use a light pencil line I'm gonna I always do mine a bit darker just for you guys so that it's easier to see so we're drawing the shape here quite close to the edge like that on the right hand side and then we're going to draw some of these rolling hills and sky in like we've got here so I'm going to start over here and I'm going to do some moving lines across so starting on the left hand side all the way over and then underneath I'm going to do a similar similar line a few centimeters down like that and now I want to put in um, like I see on this picture we can really see the movement we can see the wind here the gale so I'm going to start in the corner and I'm going to do a line going across, cutting through. I'm going to cut down to do a swirl like this. I go right off to the end of the page, so there's one. And then I'm going to do another one here. There we go. So it's just our basic outline. And next, we're going to draw in pencil some um, detail on so that when it comes to sticking our grains and our dry food, we get an idea of um, where we can stick them and what direction we'll be moving in. So for this shape here, we can do some swirly lines like this. And what will happen is we'll, we'll choose some areas to stick on, to stick our grain or pasta on. And then we can, like I say, use these as guidelines to inspire us as to where to stick. There we go. That's there. With the swirls, with this, this wind here, with this gale, I'm going to draw some more swirly lines inside. They just don't have to be perfect. They're just, just guidelines for us to follow so we can stick the appropriate food inside to add the texture on. Just a few lines like this. And same on this one too. Oh yeah, and we want to put a moon in as well. That's very important. So I'm going to do a half moon. And circles around it just marking out where everything's going to go and I'm going to put a, a centimeter down under here so I'm going to do a line and like I said when we come to paint and stick things down this is just going to help give us an idea of what direction everything is moving in Here we've got some little buildings coming up, some little houses. If 
you want, um, like I say, look at the worksheet as we do this, because this has got an original example of the, the picture that we're taking inspiration off. So it might be nice for you to, to have that as a reference as well. So we're going to interpret it and view it in slightly different ways. To me, this is starting to look quite moody, so there's quite a lot going on. And we've got some beautiful stars in the sky as well, which are shown by lots of circles. They're getting bigger and bigger as they go out. Like that. Then I'm going to do some lines around the outside. And then I can see, oh, this, if I've got some rice or some grain, those would look good stuck around. Stuck around there. I'm going to add a few of these on. Um, around the page. Different sizes. So these shapes now we're going to be painting over, like I say, and sticking dry food over. It's just a good reference point for us. Large oval shapes on here. And really, with the time we've we've got, it's up to you how much detail you want to add in when it comes to sticking. If you want to fill full areas, or if that's a bit fiddly, if you do too much too much detail, you might just do a few places. You don't need to don't need to fill in the whole picture because that would take a very long time um, unless you really want to and want to carry on later today which of course is, is great fantastic there we go so after the main shapes you've just got a few of these which are stars going around we've got a moon on the side um, and yeah I think we're I think we're ready to start so I have got my gruel here like I say this is equal quantities of flour and water I made this yesterday so it's become a little bit thicker since then um, and I've got an old paintbrush and I can, that I'm going to use if I didn't say already please make sure you've got an apron on now because this does get a little bit messy um, I'm just going to have a look at my picture and decide where I want to stick things so like I say we're all going to have completely different things in the house to use you don't have to use exactly what I use and where where I stick it it's just to give you ideas as to how you can use the dry food to help um, create textures on your artwork and add to the mood of it. I think I'd like to use a little bit of rice and see with my stars up here. I'm going to put a bit of glue in these little ovals around the side and stick some pieces of rice in there. So when you're gluing, just do one area at a time. You're going to need quite a lot of glue for these things to stick. And like I say, it's quite nice. It adds to the, you know, the bumps and the lumps, add to the texture of the piece. It's quite appropriate, quite apt with what we're doing. Get some rice and just very carefully put it on. And then 
I put the rice all the way around. The, the glue does dry quite quickly, so just do a small area at a time and leave it to dry and then move somewhere out. So for example, to show the, the movement um, of the circular stars, you could put some, for example, something small like some rice there. Um, you could, I've got these, these lines I've put on my mountains here. If you're using, like I said, if you're using PVA, things like spaghetti dry quite nicely, um, stick down quite nicely. With this gruel that I'm using, they might fall off a bit, um, but it still, it leaves quite a nice texture. So I might use a little bit, like I say, just do one bit at a time, one small bit at a time. And when it dries, you can paint over it as well. So with the gruel, so it's, it's fine. Paint over. And then with the spaghetti, just, just snapping into small bits. And I'd leave a bit of space between each piece and just follow the line up. And I've done all of these lines on the inside so I could stick different length pieces on each. And really, like I say, it's just about following the lines on your paper basically so you've got quite a lot of creative freedom now with what you stick down where and why um, so you might like I say you, you're probably not gonna have time to fill up the whole page but just choose a few areas that you would like to um, stick onto and think about why so like I say I've got these these curved lines inside of my um, mountain hill shape here and I want to I want to see these also this my stars are quite prominent so I want to stick I wanted to stick some um, dry foods on there so they really jump out against the background so like I said I'd stick dry spaghetti up all of these lines um, if you find it too fiddly just sticking on little individual areas what you can do is just use your glue fill up a whole area like the moon for example and then with the moon I could pop some I've got some green lentils here pop some green lentils on there just to fill up the whole space and then when it dries you can paint over the top and acrylic paints quite good actually because acrylic um, for what we're doing is actually um, got glue in it it's how it's, it's, it's one of the ingredients in there so it helps things down there we go so I just put a few bits on as an example um, and I keep saying this but you're going to have different things at home so just use whatever you've got and just follow the lines of the pattern okay lovely and now we're going to add some color I've got my acrylics here uh, the main colors Van Gogh used here were black um, you use dark blue, like a navy, a light blue, um, or you could just get the dark blue and mix a bit of white with it to get a lighter shade. Um, and a white or a grey, I've got a grey. Um, and like I said, if you've got more than one brush, that's really good um, for the brush stroke. If not, then don't worry. Um, and a bright yellow as well, so you can get a yellow. So what I'm going to do is start to paint in some of the areas. As an example, I'll start with my light blue. Pour a tiny amount out, we're not going to need much. And with the colours, do one part at a time. So everywhere you want to be light blue, for example, on your artwork, paint that now, just paint in light blue. And then when you finish that area, swap to another colour, for example, the black, and then do the black areas. So, just got a tiny bit of paint there got a very old paint palette here from when I was at art school. It's got lots of dry um, dry paint on. I think it kind of adds to its character. There we go. Got a good brush. And what I'm going to do, I think I'm going to start with some of these, these lines which represent the wind. And I'm going to do lots of quite thick blue lines, like dabs, like this. And the idea is that we 
filling all of the space with different colours. So any of the white areas will be filled in, but we differentiate where different shapes are with with the colours and with what we're sticking down. So I'm gonna I'm gonna follow the shape of the spirals round using the um, using the light blue. Like I say, you might sticks and things on these that's fine I'm just doing this like I say quite quickly because it, it takes quite a few hours to finish but you've, you've obviously got a bit longer than me so please take your time when it comes to sticking when we paint it over the top of everything we want to be able to see where everything is There's my, when I've done those, that's my winged area. And then the spaces in between, I'll fill in with a different colour. What else is blue? So on these circles that I've drawn, those are coloured in light blue and navy. So I'm going to add a bit of light blue. I'm just going to paint over all of them. And I might do some paints in different colours over the top so we can see, see the shapes. Uh, with the acrylic paints they're a lot thicker than the watercolours they're not designed to be watered down as much so you just need a little bit of water on your brush and obviously when you're changing colours it's a bit more going to dot some of the light blue about in the background too. Um, I think I use some different brushes to get some different um, some different line quality. So some thicker ones, some thinner ones. So I want to differentiate the different areas. So I think I'm going to use a thick one for the You don't have to start with the light blue, you can start with any colour you want to from the picture. I just thought this would be a good one to show you. There we go. So all the areas I want in light blue, I cover I colour in light blue. Um, and then when I want to move on, say for example for my navy blue. And again, for my background sky, I want to. And another thing: remember to change your water quite frequently when the when the colour starts to change. Otherwise, it can affect the the, the colour of your paint. The colours will mix and get contaminated. And then we want to fill up the white in between. So I'm going to use a bit of navy now. So, in, so yeah, the sky I can see is pretty much all light blue and dark blue and then just these these lashes of the strong winds it's got a bit of yellow and gray in there as well so we could just do the background blue get any white filled in paint the 
hide any blue areas. Like so if you've not got a light blue, you can mix your own, just a bit of um, navy blue and there, some white. Make it a bit lighter. Just spread out well, brush strokes going in one direction. colour for each area at a time and then come back in. So I'd fill out the blue for the sky. I could add a tiny bit on to maybe using a thinner line to the clouds. When I'm doing the, um, like I say, the wind here, storm I'm leaving a little bit of white space between so I want to add some gray and yellow whereas with the rest of the background sky I just want it to be this dark blue and this this light blue this navy and this light with no white showing and yeah I'll leave that there because I think I'm just we're all going to have different ways of doing it I'm just giving an example of how I do mine but the main thing is to draw out the shapes first and then to draw in some of the guidelines for how you want to stick down. If we look, like I say, it's a very moody piece, so we can really see a lot. A big storm in the sky, the, the stars. There's a lot going on. We can see a lot of movement. It's very dreamlike. So um, have a look at the worksheet um, and have a look at Van Gogh's original picture. Um, and there's some there's some step by step guide for the drawing as well. If you want to have a closer look at that. Um, draw everything out. Obviously, make sure check with an adult to see what dry food you've got and it's all right to use. Um, like I said, we're all going to have different things, so just go with what you've got, and what it's all right to use. Um, and like I say, it's quite fiddly if you're sticking small areas down like this, or if you're drawing guidelines and putting space between. If you find that too tricky and you just have lots of lentils and you want to fill in a whole area with that one thing or with pasta or whatever you have, that's absolutely fine. I'm quite interested actually to see how, although we're taking inspiration from the same artwork, the same image, how our works will all completely vary, like yours might look completely different to mine. They're all, all going to be unique, which is great. So I'm quite interested in seeing that and I will see you all later on for some feedback. Um, oh, and if you've enjoyed this, I, I, you, you might not have time before we go on Zoom, but if you wanted to do some more, um, you could could take inspiration from your garden or your house and the space around you and maybe make up your own in this style, um, following, the, following the shape of the lines. Um, and also have a look at Impressionist artwork. So if you have a look on the on the internet there's lots of lots of different examples from artists at the time who were creating similar works or look at some of Van Gogh's other works and yeah yeah basically do some of your own that's only if you want to after the session and you've got time but this is the main thing anyway so just getting um like I say a little replica or Van Gogh starry night inspired artwork brilliant thank you so much guys and take care and I look forward to seeing you after the session.